Okay. So next up, uh, we have Becky Gutwa, who is the Chief Risk Officer of the Department of Agriculture, Rural Development and Land Reform. Becky, I hope I've got it right. I'm, I'm always getting, getting the department's name muddled up, especially since they put in agriculture. But for those of you who don't know Becky, Becky, but he's very well known to us, Becky is a co optee on our executive committee and also on the public sector committee, chairperson of the membership committee, so very involved at IRMSA. And in fact, to the point that um, with our food scarcity project campaign with Food for SA, Becky was part of my initial team where we started really worrying about the problem, looking at how we're getting food from farms to the vulnerable. So Becky, thank you so much for your support there. Um, it's been very exciting. Um, we've had a lot of meetings in the last few weeks um, doing our Zoom and Microsoft meetings. Um, I've got to meet Becky's budgies a lot <laughs> in the meetings as with most of you, I'm sure you've seen each other's children, dogs, cats. So Becky's got lots of budgies. Becky, thank you so much for being here today. Um, over to you. Well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the nice introduction, uh, uh, Madam CEO. Um, hello, hello to everybody out there. It's, uh, it's quite strange to meet you all in spaces like this. I'm not too sure if um, you guys are able to see me. I've been reading a lot of things about going online and then the etiquettes and all that. So I was really coached by somebody to find a better background. I'm not sure if this, this background is working. If it's not, they will indicate to me. Um, guys, uh, thank you very much to IMSA and Continuity SA to organize this important event. It is quite good for us uh, that we keep on learning, even though we're still in this lockdown. I think we are really defying the challenges uh, that the lockdown imposes on us. Um, so it's, it's a great opportunity for me to be part of these uh, first events. Um, so I'm ready now to start. I'm not too sure about the slides. Can I get assist assistance somewhere there? Okay, there we go. There we go. Oh, okay. I'm going to get right now. Uh, colleagues, uh, my presentation is largely on the our story is about sharing our story as a department of rural development and land reform and and Gillian was trying to get the name right trust me Jill, even our colleagues at work they are still struggling to get it right um and i'll explain why as i go on with my presentation so basically i'll be sharing with you our journey and ensuring that uh, business continues during the crisis um, of COVID 19. colleagues we're also going to have a, a question and a pause that will be posing in for you to just participate and answer that question. If I can ask a little bit of some honesty there uh, on that particular question, you'll see as it will be posed to you. It's, it's a very interesting question. I'm sure you're going to like it. Okay. I'm trying to move down with my slides. Okay, there we go. Oh, I, I think I'll give you an indication then if I need to move with my slide so that we can assist with that. Thank you. Look, I, I thought before we can get into this topic and talking about it, it's important to, to sort of like agree on a, a context of, of, of this uh, topic that we're talking about, which is business continuity management. It is important that we understand that it is a, a component of a broader risk management concept. And then it, its function is basically to control the risk. So it is a control measure. But to apply it, you need to have a good uh, analysis uh, of, of your data. And then anticipation, I think that came up uh, as well from the previous speaker, Mr. Davis, as well as precision as you get into execute. So in our context, as we're telling this story, we'd like to colleagues to just understand this part where we say that a risk hit us, which is an outbreak of this pandemic. And what we needed to do was to see if our controls were ready to or were adequate to manage it. And then I think it came out quite clearly that uh, in most areas we're not so ready. So we, we did, then afterwards what we did, we did not focus on investing resources on risk identification, rather to enhance our existing controls, 
so that we are able to manage it and improve wherever we can so that we're able to deal with this uh, risk that has happened and able to manage the ripple effects. Next slide, please. Right. I'm just going to share with you what we have, uh, what we had at the time as it was hitting us. You'll see on your left there on the screen, we have those processes ex that, that exist. We talk to your generic documents that we all have, your, your policy framework strategy and, and the business continuity plans and so on and so forth. We also had uh, the business continuity steering committee. Well, I, I believe that uh, my story will be similar to uh, many of you out there, um, the, especially in the public sector. We also, we don't have a, someone who's dealing with business continuity. We have a position that we've been struggling to um, uh, fill. So this could be what others are also experiencing. Some, they don't even have it in the structure, but anyway, we, 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 we try to do with the little that we've got. Now, in hindsight, uh, as we proceed with this uh, situation, we have looked at what is currently working. So at the moment, that business steering committee for us is working. But most importantly, what is working for us are the risk scenario analysis. So the analysis that we keep on uh, working on, we keep on uh, conducting for, for, for the organization. There is a part that I think uh, Berenice spoke to, which was uh, the buy-in that we are getting from executive uh, management. So, that as well is sort of like working for us because we're getting called in more to give our views, to give some advice. So this is this that's where this this is. So we think that is also working. Now, but having said that, I thought maybe if I just look at the question on our presentation, what we'll be doing is to answer this question that were we adequately prepared for this, even after we have heard that it is here, it 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 it, it is now on our shores. Next slide, please. Okay, great. So our experience is here. It is when the COVID was, was looming. We heard that it was here, it was at the airports, and then there was someone in, in, in Deben, KZN, who um, got infected, and that particular guy was very responsible by taking some uh, precautionary measures by isolating himself. So everybody was running around, so what we did we sat around the, the table as business uh, continuity steering committee, also uh, engage other chief risk officers in the industry, finding out from them if um, there's anything that they know that we didn't know and share some information, share some knowledge. So that's what we did, trying to, so that we can get prepared. But also at the same time, we were reading more on the things that were happening at that point. Um, looking at the risk event and how it is affecting other countries. I remember we were checking China, South Korea, and Italy, trying to learn, and then we got some nice things that were done in, in, in South Korea. So that is what we we're looking at, and we also looked at our responses. If, 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 if there was any spaces or gaps for us to improve immediately, so that we were able to deal with that. But in our analysis, what, what also was prevalent was the ICT infrastructure analysis. So we know largely in most uh, public sector organizations, we find that the ICT infrastructure is not, is not so great, but we're looking at that to see what's available, how can we quickly look, uh, improve that. And it dawned on us that the current business in, in, in impact analysis that we had was not ready, was not adequate, because we had not included the, the pandemic, not of this uh, magnitude. So we then looked at the essential functions, the critical functions, we categorized them into looking at what is happening at the back end office, transversal, like your HR finance, as well as the frontline, because in our department, we have a large number of um, services where we are dealing with uh, the work-ins clients. So we are sort of like, we categorize those. And then we spoke to our superiors. Unfortunately, at the time, they could not move because there was no indication from the, from the national government, from parliament, so now we had to sit with that analysis, but we're sitting in anticipation until at some point an announcement was made after they established the National Command Council on COVID-19. Also another secular from uh, Department of Public Service and Administration came out, as well as directives from Department of Employment and Labor. So once we've got that, we're now able to mesh with what we had already uh, uh, analyzed, we, we were already prepared, then we started to move in. But as we're going there, we noticed that 
there was a, there was a, there was a bit of a confusion between the lockdown and the shutdown in our organization, and that I think was caused by the maturity of an agricultural culture. Some people believe that as we're looking down, we're shutting down, so no work was going to be performed. But we had to sort of like deal with that as well, also in our communique in the department. That's what we did. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. Now, as we went to this lockdown, uh, which is the part that uh, Gillian would be sort of like confusing you, but I'm going to clarify it now. So as we're moving there, um, we were, if you look on your left, there, there's DRDLR, that is Department of Rural Development and Land Reform, so, which is where I am. So our headcount is about 5,800. We have about 88 uh, buildings. But if you look on your right uh, hand side of the screen is Department of Agriculture, Forests and Fisheries. Their headcount is about 2,500 about 2, with about 59 buildings. So as you all know, post the elections last year, in May last year, so these two departments were said to be merging. So we're going to merge with these two departments. And the merging was going to happen on the 1st of April. And then this was going to be during the lockdown. Because you remember that the lockdown went on on the, um, on the 27th. The first date was on the 27th of March. So we went our own different uh, ways as these two departments, even though we're trying to work together, but it was not so easy because not many things were spelled out. And then in that midst, uh, the minister, uh, Minister Togotitiza, announced that uh, as we go into the lockdown, we'll set aside 1.2 billion rands for the disaster relief for communal and smallholder farmers so, so that we can ensure that food security continues. So that's what happened. But come the 1st of April, not many things were done from the uh, executive authority side of things, which is the minister and the president. So basically in our department, we had uh, no director general, we had no chief risk officer, but we had to try and work with these two departments because most of the areas were not formally merged. And this means that we're going to have about 8,290 officials, which is what we have at the moment. Then we became a Department of Agriculture, Land Reform, and Rural Development. We have about 147 buildings. That gives you um, 258 entrances. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you as we go on with this um, to say why is this so important, because it had to deal with business continuity. Next slide, please. Right, so during lockdown, we're able to get some of the functions working um, as we're trying to tell other people, uh, officials, that it's not a shutdown, but it's a lockdown, so you should be able to work. And as expected, ICT became really a strong backbone for the organization because we're relying mostly on Microsoft Teams as we are still now relying on this. So we, we had some challenges though, and because I'm, I'm sure many of you have experienced this in your different organizations. Um, people complaining with data and also human resources. I'm, I'm one of those people who, have, who has never um, um, uh, worked from home, uh, unless if maybe I'm, I'm on a sick leave, then I get to grab a laptop for two, three hours. But this now is more like long, long term, so to speak. So we're also not used to, to this. And then we've asked HR to help us devise some programs so that they, they can assist us in dealing with this. Next slide, please. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you just now the, 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 the survey that we did. So we did a business continuity survey during the lockdown. I think this was about third week into the lockdown where we wanted to check the issues that were there that were being experienced by the officials as we expected to work from, from, from home. So it was just a, a, quick, a, quick, a quick one. And I think my slide is not so clear, but I'm, I'll try to navigate with you quickly. If you look at the top left, the top left there, uh, that it shows the graph of the, the, of the people that we said yes to the question where we asked, are you able to uh, log in and hold meetings while, while you're working from home? The green is for the yes and, and the black is for the no. So, but we had a large number of people that were able to connect. This, 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 this was answered by all man managers in the department. Right, if you look at the next one, which is the, the next uh, cell there, um, where the other color thing is orange and green. Um, they were asking if they, if they are able to 
uh, if, if, if the people that were identified either as core and essential, if they're able to connect and participate in those meetings. So we got an answer that uh, it was almost like half, but um, of the people that were either able to connect and not able to connect. Now, we, in our questionnaire, in our survey, we're trying to pick up the problems here, which came up in that histor histogram uh, uh, graph, as you can see on the top right. There, we're trying to find out if your answer to the other question was, was yes, in terms of people unable to connect, what would be the challenges? And the most one, as we expected, was data. People were experiencing a shortage of data. I think as an organization, we had not prepared the high usage of data. So now we had to go back and, and relook at our ICT uh, strategy and see how we can buy data. And then we've done that, we've gone to negotiate with the service providers, because we've got two that are supplying us so that we can get more data at better prices. And in that, uh, if you can see right at the bottom, which is your bottom, bottom right, that 5.58, uh, 5, 5 we wanted them just to tell us how was business continuity working for them in the organization as it was designed. So we've got about just above average, which was 5.58 um, um, of, 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 of the rating, how people were finding it. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. Right. This is what happened here. So this is, I thought I should just share with you some of the scenarios that we've, 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 we've conducted in the department. While we're still in that lockdown, I think it was on the 8th of April, where we went on to look at these scenarios. Remember, we're going for, the, this was the first time, the first lockdown, so to speak. We're still going for day 21. Then we're looking at day 21, what may happen on that day. So we had about three scenarios that we looked at. Uh, first one is that maybe the lockdown will be lifted and what will happen, what will be the repercussions? We'll be ready for whatever that it may come with. If it gets extended, what will happen? And, and at that one was the peak, the high peak, this talks to the infection rates going rocket, rocketing up the skies. Most of our colleagues either affected or infected. How are we going to deal with that? And how are we going to give them support and counseling when they lose their, their, their loved ones? And also looking at the issue that they may not be able to work should that happen, right? So then on, on, the, on the 9th, on the 9th of, 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 uh, on the 9th of April, fortunately the president announced the, 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 the unlockdown, which was, sorry, it was not the unlockdown, the extension, <laughs> that's what happened. So we also said, okay, this at least it was covered under our scenarios of the extended. So we're looking at all of these and, and then all these scenarios have sort of like played themselves out with an exception of one, I think, which is a high peak. I think this one is still coming. The point that I want to emphasize here is that even at the time when we had this analysis before the announcement of the, of the, of the, of the extension, we could not do much because we had to wait for the announcement from the uh, Central Command Council, which is another challenge for us in, in, the, in the public sector. Next slide, please. Right. So it, it got extended, then we we're waiting for what we didn't know what was going to be. Um, uh, this is what we did in our, in, our, in our plan. We did this before the announcement that was made of the alert level four. So in our plan to get as a business continuity. So in our business continuity, we've got IT, we've got facilities, OHS, we've got security, then there's risk management. So those are the people that are represented or sections that are represented in our business steering community continuity. It is working very nicely with some challenges, but we are doing quite, 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 quite better. Now, we developed the, the plan of how we're going to deal with, with things should we now go back to work. There was just before we heard of the, um, the alert level four. Again, we're trying to work on some scenarios and, and then anticipate what could be announced or be the outcome from the command cancer. Now, our plan in dealing with the virus was one, we're looking at decontamination, using of the infrared thermometers, provision of PPEs, and most importantly, the uh, social distancing within the offices, as in some of these we share, we share their open plans. And the other one is talking to working remotely. But not only, these are not the only things that we looked at, but these are the critical five elements of our return to work plan. We looked at a, a number of issues, schools not opening, the use of public transport, uh, program awareness that we have to continue. So these are sort of like 
issues that we looked at in most instances. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. Right. Okay. The slides are coming are coming are coming out a, a bit a bit uh, different here, but um, I'll, I'll I'll help out with this. Now, with that plan that we have we have devised, uh, <clears throat> we have started to roll it out. I think it was on the thirtieth of April when the minister wanted to see the, how ready were we uh, uh, to. Um, go back to, to the office and then we shared that, that plan. And then in our organization, anywhere some people were already working, if you can see on the top left there, the essential animal health, food security and agriculture production. So those one had to continue though, because they were essential services, but most uh, functions were sort of like um, uh, on a really lockdown and they were working from home, right? So we worked on this plan we had some dates that we had proposed. We had proposed for all of them um, to go back to the office, which is a one third of the organization. And our one third, it's a maximum of 2,763. So we worked out on this plan, and but the, the minister was not happy that some of the dates were too far. We had to bring some of the functions too close. And then the reasons were very clear. Um, then we, for that, we decided to have the one on the 13th of May, as you can see on top there. Because the reason here is because this function is generating its own profit. And if it continues to be uh, closed, then the, 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 the country is losing, is, losing, is losing a lot of money. Because per month, you're looking at about 60 million rents that is generated by this section. Now, then we're able to get these offices ready by the 13th of May, and everybody went back to work. But this was a one third. So this section has got about 11 buildings. Uh, and 1,395 officials. So we're able to get that function working. And on the 13th of May, there are doors open and then the public could go and, uh, and do their, their, their work there with them. On the 18th of May, we had more functions opening, um, which is about, what, about three, four days ago. It's about three days ago. Um, that has gone well, but not without challenges. As you can see at the bottom right there, I've, I've indicated that we've got some unions. Our, 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 Department is a highly contested area where we have unions that want to uh, to be heard and they, they want to make sure that the people are safe as we're taking them back to work. So that's a matter that we are still dealing with at the moment where they are raising issues that we may not have been able to deal with um, issues as they would have expected. But we are engaging on them, giving them our portfolio of evidence, showing them the processes that we have followed in dealing with this. So as we speak, there's that meeting that is continuing now, but I had to miss that one because I'm here. But I've got my director general there leading the, um, the the executive in dealing with the unions. But that's where we are as far as outcomes is, is are concerned on this gradual uh, 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 plan of going back to the office. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. Right, this is the last slide, colleagues. Uh, this is a, just a short journey that I just shared with you. There are many things that have happened that because of time I, I was not able to share them here. So our chain has been largely influenced by the processes of government that are not so agile, as you saw there. So we had to do a lot of scenario analysis, do analysis, data analysis, and then but wait for the government or for the national government or national command council to give a go ahead, then you move again. But at least if you have analysis, it, 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 it gets you ready to start moving or to change wherever you can before the before the times uh, it, 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 we are required to start. Again, what it has been affected by the maturity level of organizational culture. This is a serious challenge. This is a serious challenge that we have. And the organizational culture is not at the level where you are really can run, we are, we are ready to run a, a, a smooth business continuity plan. But we have those problems, but we are dealing with them now as we speak. And then again, if you're looking, if I can take you to the fifth bullet uh, uh, point there, it's, 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 it has been influenced by the understanding that the outbreak occurred and the employed measures were not adequate. So we worked on getting the partnership. So we've been working closely with in our partnership, HR facilities, OHS and 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 who and security. So we've been working together with that and trying to get the roles allocated to each 
um, a unit. So risk management has been largely more of the facilitating and coordinating. We have not gone, as I indicated earlier, we have not gone to conduct the risk assessment, but we have allowed OHS to conduct the risk assessment, as it was said by the Department of Labor's uh, directive, that it has to be an OHS assessment that is COVID forecast. Then we've allowed them to do it, but we're working together with them in doing that particular assessment. So, because we, we, we we're of the view that the risk is okay. It's all about dealing the ripple effects and how do we deal with them? How do we improve our 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 our, our measures that we've got in place? So, and 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 then basically here, what we also did was try to keep it simple, avoid the jargons. As a result, we've had the Director General calling us for a lot of advice, even the Minister wanting risk management to present. And we've been doing a lot of this presentation feedback and then giving our advice. And the Minister has been has, has not been disappointed with us. She's been liking what we've been giving to her and presenting for, for the whole department. And, and again, why we're able to do this and why we're able to get this sort of like buy-in from both the Director General and the Minister, it was because of these scenario analysis that we did, analyzing the data that we have available, then anticipate, and then we're given the green light to move, then we move with speed and precision so that they can see value from us, but not to talk about just the complications of the inherent residual risk and so on and so forth, but we try to keep it simple and use a lot of analysis. That's what, that was my last slide. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Becky. Um, a lot of chirping there from the Birdman. So just looking at the feedback, um, that was a joke, Becky. Just looking <laughs> at the feedback, <laughs> lots of agreement with um, you, the presentation that you've just shared with us. But if I interpret the comments that, that um, uh, that I've received from Liberty, Chipankangawu, and Tsatse, a question um, that's, that comes out of uh, the comments made, do you consider this, um, firstly saying that everybody agrees that we've missed this, that we haven't given it enough attention, would you consider this, or the reason for this being a black swan, or was it the gray elephant in the room, meaning that we didn't see it coming at all out of the left field, or it was just one of those typical behaviors of oversight um, bodies that you have the risk on the register or on the emerging risk radio, uh, radar, but nobody wants to talk about it because it's so remote. What would your opinion be on that? Oh, yeah, um, it's a nice and interesting question. Look, my opinion will be on the last part, Chris. I think for some departments, because I've asked other colleagues if they had had this identified. And for them, they said it was there, but epidemic, maybe not pandemic, but whatever difference that is. So, but nobody was interested to talk about it uh, because people are dealing with the real issues that are affecting them here now. And and then, and then, so I think Joe? That, that's where it was and that's where we have failed as, 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 as a country. Because it was coming, but we could not be we could not deal with it. So that's that I would agree with the last part of your of your statement that it was more like, did you say a grey elephant? We were not able to deal with it even though it was it was with us. Yeah. Yes, I, I I suppose the analogy is saying it's the elephant in the room. So it's been yeah. there, it's been on the World Economic Forum. If you listen to Michael Davies, it's been there. Um, we've seen actually we've seen movies about this. I mean, they've shown yes. us in movies what this would look like and what the impact of this would be. So one, you know, sort of um, thinks, uh, how did we miss it? How did it become not a black swan, but the elephant in the room? So following on question here, um, how would you suggest that we um, get our message across so that the elephant in the room actually gets discussed? Maybe two, two suggestions how we can change the way that we get our message across to the oversight uh, bodies. Oh, that's not an easy one. First, I think you need to be seen as a risk officer playing a role in, in the organization. They first have to get comfortable with it. You must be able to give that advice that matters to them. Keep it simple. And this is what I do in my area. Um, I report, my report is very brief and fast. That way I can, and most of the things I reported. Shall I thank Becky? 
so, <laughs> so that so that it's, it's easy for the for for, for 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 the executive to read it and digest it. So I keep it simple as 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 as, as, as much as possible as I can. That is how it works for, for us. And then that in in going forward, that will assist for them to hear uh, to listen uh, from us. And at the same time, this last point here, what's important is that if we are given that kind of opportunity, seize that moment, give the right message. Excellent. Okay, so thank you, Becky. Um, I'm going to hand over to Gillian. Over to you.